This video is to help you review solving one-step equations. Make sure you have a calculator to help you out here. Okay, so our first equation is going to be 7x is equal to 343. Okay, so we're trying to solve for x. So right now, the, mul the variable is being multiplied by 7, so we want to undo that. So to get rid of the 7 that's being multiplied by the x, we're going to divide each side by 7. And I don't want you to write it like this, because in the future it will help you to write it um, as a fraction. So write divide as a division bar there, okay, as a fraction bar. So divide each side by 7. So we can see that the 7's cancel out because 7 divided by 7 is 1, so that leaves us with 1x or just x. You can write the 1x, that's fine if you want to, um, but you do not have to, so I'll write it two ways. So I'll go ahead and write 1x, and then you do 343 divided by 7, which is 49. So again, you can write 1x equals 49, or x is equal to 49. And so you box that up because that's your final answer as long as it's correct. So we want to go back and check our answer. So we're going to write check. And so the original problem is asking 7 times what number is equal to 343? So by solving this equation we're saying that the only way this statement can be true is if x is equal to 49. So we're saying 7 times 49 is equal to 343. So our check is just going to make sure that that actually is true. So what we do is we're going to plug in, or substitute in, our value for x, 49, and for, and for x. Okay, so we're saying that x is equal to 49, so instead of this x here, we write 49. And then we're going to put a question mark above the equal sign, because we're not really sure if that's correct or not. Now these one-step equations are pretty obvious to whether they're right or not, but again, this is going to be more helpful to you in the future when we have to do more complicated equations. So then you just evaluate it. So the right side, there's nothing to do, but the left side, 7, parentheses, 49, remember, parentheses, if it's right next to each other, a number right next to parentheses, that indicates multiplication. So 7 times 49, if you multiply that on a calculator again, and I suggest you do, just to check to make sure you didn't mess up anything, uh, is 343. So we show that, hey, 343 is equal to 343, so we check put this little check mark here to show that it's true. So all we did was we said, oh, 7 times 49, we replaced that with 343. This side didn't have anything to do. We write 343, and we make sure that that final statement is a true statement. So our final answer is x equals to 49, because we proved that it works. So let's do another one that has to do with division here. So we're going to say x divided by 9 is equal to 20. Okay, so I'm saying this equation is asking some number divided by 9 is equal to 20. So we're going to undo that operation. So we want to undo dividing by 9 by multiplying by 9. So for these kind of problems I suggest when x is written as a fraction and it's in the numerator there that we just write it off to the side. So we're going to write times 9 over 1 here and then on this side I'm just going to write times 9 because since 20 is not a fraction, writing it as a fraction will not um, help me anymore. And then we can cross reduce. So I can see that um, 9 and 9 both can be divided by 9. It reduces to 1. If you don't like doing that, think about it this way. If you multiply across 9 times x would give you 9x over and then you have 1 times 9 would give you 9 and then you can see 9x divided by 9 is equal to 1x, or just x. So x is equal to, then we want to do 20 times 9, which is 180. And we'll box that up. And then we'll check to make sure that that's true. So in our check, we are going to, again, substitute in our answer for the variable. So since it says x divided by 9, I'm going to do 180 divided by 9 because that's what I'm saying x is equal to. And we're going to check, does that really equal 20? So then again, use your calculator just to be sure. And so if you do 180 divided by 9 on your calculator, you do get 20. So I'm simply changing this to a more simplified version, it's 20. And yes, that is equal to 20. So I'm going to put a check mark, and then I know that my answer is correct. 
Now we're going to do some with addition and subtraction. I'm going to change our variable up here. I'm going to use our variable of n. So I'm going to say n plus t uh, 15 is equal to 37. So we're trying to figure out what x is equal to, so I'm saying, or n is equal to, so I'm saying some number plus 15 is equal to 37. So I took the number, added 15, and got 37. So to undo this 15, or to make it 0, I don't want it there anymore. I just want to isolate this variable n. I need to get rid of it, or do the um, inverse operation. So to undo adding 15, I'm going to subtract 15. So we're undoing that operation so that it becomes 0, and we're left with just the variable on the left side of our equation. So by doing that, the 15 minus 15, I can combine that and simplify it to be 0. So you can write n plus 0, but you definitely don't have to. When it zeroes out, that's just n. n plus 0 is just n. So since that term zeroes out, we can just know that it's no longer there, and we're left with just n. The only time you would have to write 0 is if there was nothing else there. So if that n was not there and you subtract 15 minus 15, you would have to write 0 because you always have to have something on both sides of your equations. And 0 does count as something. So then on the right side, I can combine 37 and uh, negative 15 because they're like terms. So I can simplify 37 minus 15 to get 22. So my final answer is that n is equal to 22. So we're going to make sure that that is correct. So does that really make a true statement? Instead of n, we write 22, because that's what the equation says, n, but we're saying n has to equal 22, plus 15. Is that really equal to 37? And then again, use a calculator just to check to make sure you're not being silly, especially when you have negatives involved. Um, but 22 plus 15 is 37, 37 equals 37, and our answer is correct. Okay, now we're going to do one with subtraction. So um, let's do p plus, or let's do p minus 80 is equal to 123. Actually, let's make it a negative number to negative 14. So this equation is saying I took some number p, I subtracted 80, and I got negative 14. And what is p? So we're going to undo this operation. I took, I had a number and I took 80 away from it. So to get back to my original number, I want to add 80. And again, that makes um, the variable isolated because when I add 80 here, a negative 80 plus 80 becomes 0. It zeroes that term out, and so I'm just left with my variable p. So I can figure out what it's equal to. What you do to one side, you have to do to the other. And a strategy I've used before with kids is to make sure you uh, put a line with your equal sign so you don't lose your equal sign and you know uh, that you're doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. So then negative 14 plus 80. Again, when you've got negatives and positives that you're adding, please use a calculator just to make sure you're not being silly. But we can reason this out. This is a negative number plus a positive number, so they're going to take away from each other. So this is really just like 80 minus 14. And so that is 66. And then on the left side here, the negative 80 plus 80 zeroes out, and you're just left with P on that side. So we get P is equal to 66. Again, we want to check our answer to make sure we are correct. So P, or 66, minus 80. Again, I'm just recopying this exact equation except I'm replacing my solution for p in 2p. Okay, so 66, I'm saying is the solution, so I substitute that for p. Is that really equal to negative 14? Again, grab a calculator, just make sure you're not being crazy and um, or just, you know, making a math mistake. So 66 minus 80, type that in on the calculator and you do get negative 14. Do not assume that it works because a lot of times I'll have people just assume that it works and then their answer is really incorrect and they don't catch their error. That's the whole point of doing these checks is to catch your errors. So you want to make sure to have a calculator handy. So our answer for that one is P is equal to 66. Okay, so we'll do one more that has to do with um, fractions. So we've got, uh, let's do two-thirds x is equal to 
uh, 28. So in this one, I'm saying 2 thirds time, times some number x is equal to 28. So I want to do the opposite. So since we're multiplying by 2 thirds, we want to divide by 2 thirds. However, divided by, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the easier way to do these types of problems is to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll show you two ways here. Okay. So we could divide each side by 2 thirds. But here's the problem. We can easily see that 2 thirds divided by 2 thirds becomes 1. So we can cancel those out and say, oh, that becomes 1, so that's just 1x equal to. Over here, though, you've got to remember that we're doing 28 divided by 2 thirds. So you need to write it off to the side like this, and then remember to multiply by the reciprocal. So instead of dividing, we're multiplying by the reciprocal of whatever we're dividing by. So the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves. A lot of times kids just end up um, multiplying these together and then you're going to get the wrong answer. So the easier way to do this is just in the beginning to remember that dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So we're going to multiply each side and again I'm going to do this off to the side. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 2 thirds is 3 halves. And remember that multiplying by a reciprocal um, a number and its reciprocal, the product, is equal to 1. That's the whole point, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So I'm going to write the right side as 28 over 1, since I am multiplying it by a fraction, which is 3 halves. So remember, the whole point of a reciprocal is that the product of a number and its reciprocal is 1. Because if we just multiply across here, 3 times 2 gives us 6, oh, but the other way around, 2 times 3 also gives us 6 which is equal to 1. So that will always happen when you multiply a number by its reciprocal. You'll get the same product in the numerator and denominator, which always reduces to 1. You can also do it like this. You can do cross-reducing. So I can say, oh, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 3 divided by 3 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So th that cross-reducing happens, and then you get 1x. So either way you want to do it is fine. But you definitely want to multiply by the reciprocal. Then over here on the right side, we can do some multiplica multiplication too. So 28 times 3, if you just want to multiply across, you can totally do that. So you can do 28 times 3 gives you 84 in the numerator. In the denominator, it's 1 times 2. And then you do 84 divided by 2, which is 42. Or the easier way I like to do it, is to do cross-reducing. So since we've got a number in the numerator and the denominator that have a common factor, we can divide by it. So 2 divides evenly into 28 and 2. So divide 28 by 2, you get 14. Divide 2 by 2, you get 1. So now look, our denominator is 1, which is nice because that means our answer is a um, an integer. And then we can just um, multiply 14 times 3 in the numerator to get our final answer, which again, it's 42. So it doesn't matter which way you multiply, and you can use a calculator to help you. Um, I just like prefer this method, um, but it doesn't matter. As long as you're getting consistently the right answer, you should be okay. So now let's go ahead and check this. So we're saying that 2 thirds times um, x, which we said is 42, and I'm going to write it as 42 over 1 since I'm multiplying by a fraction. It just makes it easier. Is that really equal to 28? So that's what we're checking here. Again, you can multiply across. You can do 2 times 42, which is 84, over the denominator's 3 times 1, which is 3, and then do 84 divided by 3 to see what you get. So 84 divided by 3 is 28. So 28 is equal to 28, we are correct. Or you can do like how I like to do it, which is to cross-reduce. So I know that 42 is divisible by 3. So I can divide 42 by 3 and 3 by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 42 divided by 3 is 14. Now my denominator is 1, so I know my answer is an integer. And then I can just multiply the numerator, 2 numerators. Uh, 2 times 14 is 28. So our answer again is correct. 
So remember, when you are um, have a fractional coefficient, so the number multiplied by the variable is fractional, multiply by the reciprocal instead of dividing by the fraction. You're technically doing the same thing, but it's way easier to look at it this way, and that's what you end up doing anyway if you do it correctly. You will have more success if you just start that off at the beginning. So that's it for solving one-step equations. I've got some extra practice problems that you can work on, and you can let me know if you need any additional help. Thanks for watching.